My name is Roland Sintas Coloma. I'm a professor here at University of Toronto and the co-director for the Center for Integrative for Anti-Racism Studies and one of the co-editors of the book. I want to take a brief moment to recognize the land that we are on and the original inhabitants of the Turtle Island, especially the indigenous peoples of Mississauga Port Credit. Like many things that do matter, this book is a labor of love. And it is with loving labor that I share with my co-editors, Bonnie McElhenney, J.P. Katungal, Ethel Tumohan, and, De and Lisa Davidson. My co-editors and I have prepared a short-ish program for the book launch. And my task is to welcome everyone and provide a little bit of a background and some context in the production of this book. I'm a the director of Women and Gender Studies and I'm also in the Anthropology Department. And in this book, um, we honor the work of past scholars on these issues. And this is, a, this is a, an exciting moment, but this is not the first moment and it's not the last moment where we will be thinking through the questions that are raised in this book as we showcase, I think, the future. Um, there's cutting edge research in this book being done by graduate students and young faculty and this work and these scholars are going to change the academy, the, uh, the government, the university, the community, the world. Um, but we know full well that our work builds on the intellectual work of many others. Now we acknowledge many different kinds of intellectual debts in this book. Um, to Filipino-American studies, um, to transnational post-colonial studies of the Philippines, to critical imperial histories, to critical gender and race studies, to Canadian studies, um, studies represented by many people here. But I wanted to mention in particular um, another genealogy, and this is work specifically focusing on um, Filipinos in Canada, Filipino-Canadians. The use of temporary workers whose labors are mined, but who are sent back and disposed of once they are need they are not needed anymore. Shame. Shame. On that note, let us celebrate achievements, small and large. Uh, these achievements are forms of resistance, uh, of resistance and of daring to survive in a context where we are constantly erased. Um, and on that note, uh, Marami Salama, thank you very much for um, indulging me in front of you, and I turn it over um, to So JP's speech is actually a perfect segue for what I want to talk about today, which is I want to explore the feasibility of forming partnerships between academics and activists. Surveying the room, and I, I know most of the people here, it strikes me that half the room I'd say are academics, um, maybe the other half are activists. No, wait, 40% are activists and maybe like 20 per no, is my math correct? 10%? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, probably straddle, uh, you know, both, both camps. So what I want to do is start by asking, are, former, are forming partnerships between academics and activists possible? Can these partnerships be used to further the field of Filipino-Canadian studies? Forming these partnerships. Um, if I don't get to individually congratulate each and every one of you, I wanted to just say congratulations and I'm so incredibly proud of the work that you've all put together. So incredibly proud. I remember going through university in my undergrad and my, in my postgrad. And I suppose you'll be, you've heard this and you'll be hearing it again throughout the night, but I'll say it again. Congratulations to, the, to, to everyone for, uh, for, uh, for this uh, fantastic volume. Um, just a little bit of a backstory. The moment that I learned that Professor Coloma will be requiring this for, for one of his classes in the, graduate, the, gra in the School of Graduate Studies, I said, finally, this is going to be, this is now going to be uh, available. So that was my cue to start badgering U of T Press if, uh, is, this already out, is this already commercially available? So uh, uh, I am kind of proud to say that I got this book ahead of, uh, ahead of most of us here. <laughs> I just want to say that I'm really proud of the writers and everyone who put um, lots of effort into this book. Um, I'm especially very proud of my mom, Lisa, because uh, she, it was really rough times like writing this, and, but uh, I remember like she came home one day and she was really proud that 
of herself, and I was really proud of her for writing this book. And it was it was a lot of effort, and I'm just really proud, you know. Um, <laughs> Noted, it's it's a milestone for the Filipino community in Canada. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here. Um, why is this so amazing? I don't know. <laughs> um, I didn't expect to cry. I mean, like, okay, getting emotional here, Connolly. Don't know what's going on, but I think. Um, Sometimes we can feel really disconnected from some of these processes, from you know, um, you know, going through the process of editing and re-editing and editing and re-editing, and you know. Um, but you realize when you have a a community in one room together uh, celebrating a momentous occasion like this, um, it's it's just I can't help but feel overwhelmed. You know, I can't help but feel like this is this is an important occasion. We do need to celebrate it. Um, and and recognize that this is this is necessary. I mean, so many of us have said already that you know this is um, this has never been done before. You know, um, and and you know, top source country for immigrants. You know, fourth largest immigrant community in the country. You know, um, it's it's just you know it's important that that we're here today and that we're. You know, we're kind of cognizant that this is this is a moment to you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing because we're all um, we're all in it. We, we're empowering ourselves. Like we don't. For for once, we're defining, we're writing, and we are describing who we are and talking to each other, creating a community um, that is full of the people.